back to Lessons Learned. I'm Sherry and I am going to show you how I'm going to do some thread art on this table runner. Uh, this is a table runner that's not exactly a quilt. It doesn't have batting in it, but it does have several layers, layers of fabric and also some adhesive under these applique flowers, but they're kind of plain. So I want to go ahead and put some uh, thread over those to create some dimension. Um, typically this is called thread art. I'm not a talented artist by any means, but anybody can doodle. So I'm going to doodle with my sewing machine with some purple thread to give a little more character to these flowers here. So to do that, you want to get your machine in uh, quilting mode. So uh, what I have is a Baby Lock Jazz 2 and I have lowered my feed dogs. I have changed my foot to a darning foot or quilting foot, not the walking foot, but the one with the little uh, metal or plastic hole that bounces up and down. I've put my uh, thread in and adjusted my attention up to about eight. Uh, thread width and length doesn't really matter, so I didn't touch those. I cleared off my table so I have range of movement to move around like we do when we're doing free motion quilting. Another thing I like to do is do a little test piece. And while I had my white thread in, I tested everything out as far as the tension and some design ideas. And I kind of wanted to come out with something kind of like this on the flower. So I practiced that a little bit and then I changed my thread out. And before I actually do it on my uh, project, I uh, did a few little things with that uh, re-threaded machine with the new thread in it. So I am using a Coates and Clark thread because that's the only thing I could find in the right color. Uh, historically, my machine does not mind uh, cheaper threads. So I'm just going to go with that and I'm going to go ahead and get started here. And you can just kind of watch. I'm going to start in the middle of a flower and then just kind of project towards the outer edge of the flower and just inside of the edges I'm going to outline and then I'm going to go through and echo or echo that same design back towards the center and hopefully wind up in a position to where I can just move on to the next petal. and cut my beginning thread off here. I did bounce up and down in the center a little bit to kind of give a little center to that flower. Go ahead and give you a shot here of what this looks like. And I did put this purple thread on the back as well, or on the bottom, on the bobbin thread. Um, this kind of gives you an idea of how my little design turned out. And then here's what it looks like. Just a very subtle little design on there. So let's do another one.
like to get my loose threads off of here so they don't get wound up in something that I don't want them wound up in. This one's not quite as glamorous, but it's getting the job done. Like I say, I'm not very artistic with this, but it's basically free motion quilting. Just a little bit more dense and not as long of a length of thread. You'll notice I'm not really, although I go pretty fast with the foot pedal, I'm not going too fast with my stitches, with my actual movements, because I want really tiny stitches. I don't want long, you know, the long beautiful stitches that you have uh, on regular quilting. You kind of want something way smaller than that for this. have those three finished. Looks pretty decent. I probably could also add uh, maybe a lighter purple thread to give it a little more um, realness to it, to the flower. I'm not sure. I might do that. So let me do the other end. I have two flowers on this end. You also want, if you have a needle down feature in your on your machine, you want to make sure you turn that on so that when you stop, maybe you have to stop unexpectedly right in the middle of your design, then your needle will stay down and in place and it won't jog over on you to where you've lost your, um, your shape that you were trying to get. One more purple flower here. Uh, 
I like to use these curved scissors as well while I'm doing this so that you don't, uh, when you're clipping those threads out of your way, you're not, uh, you're not going to cut your fabric. I have to come back and get my loose threads off. Um, those are the flowers. Those are done. So I'll be right back with some green thread so that we can uh, do our petals. Okay, so here we are again with green thread and I did a little practice here. And when you go to do, if you're doing leaves, if you go to do your veins in your leaves, it's perfectly okay to run up one end and then down the other and then back up over to your vein and back over it again back up the stem back over it again until you've got as many veins on your leaf as you want so i'm checking also to see if my um, tension is okay if everything's okay with the threading of the machine because i don't want to mess up on my project not knowing if everything's in order so now on my practice piece I was I determined that everything's okay so I can go ahead and start stitching on my leaves always make sure that your presser foot is down I'm just going to start uh, in between the petals where I've laid this leaf and just kind of bounce up and down a little bit and then take off right up the center, kind of a curvy vein and I'm going all the way back down over that leaf, over that vein again and back out to make a vein on the side, back over it back up your main vein and then up and over to make another one and backwards over it again. And then you can go down again your main vein and go to the other side and make veins in the same manner. I have one little leaf done here. I'll let you take a look at it. Everything's still looking okay on the back. A little bit of fuzz coming out of my machine there. Probably need to clean my machine. But here's my little leaf on the back and then on the front. That's what it looks like. And like I said, I'm not an artist, but it seems like the more thread you put on, the more forgiving it is. So don't be afraid to go over and over something that just doesn't look right, because the more thread you have over that so-called mistake, the less it looks like a mistake. 
So just kind of go at it confidently and and uh, keep your speed kind of high on your foot and slow on your hand. Bouncing up and down a little here. Don't slam down your presser foot like I just did. That isn't very nice. right pretty happy with the way that looks and just remember that things in nature are not perfectly symmetrical so the fact that you know my little veins are all different sizes just kind of coincides with uh, how you know real light leaves and petals are so I think it looks pretty good so let me do this one
if you noticed my machine was making a little bit of uh, rough noise there, uh, I believe that's because of the um, material that's used to attach the applique. It's pretty stiff. It's almost like cardboard. So imagine your needle bouncing through cardboard. Um, that's kind of where that's coming from. So everything's fine. Hope you can see that. And now I'm gonna to go to my other side and do the green on it. And I have two, three little um, leaves there that I'm gonna put some designs on. started to go backwards with my veins there for a second <laughs> so I had to kind of move things around to make it look correct but uh, there's a lot of leeway in this you don't have to be super super particular about every movement and that's why I love to do it and you get a little more and more satisfied with your work the more you do it um i haven't done much lately of this so i was overdue to experiment with some thread art get all my threads off and I'll show you the end result all right so everything's all neatened up now my back is this is not a reversible table runner so I'm not concerned about this being on the back normally you wouldn't probably let that show on the back you would especially with applique uh, you would most likely go ahead and, and do your thread art on it before uh, you know you put your back on so that you wouldn't have the threads on the back like you would a normal quilt but uh, since this is something that isn't going to be turned over most likely uh, it's okay to go ahead and let your your threads show but uh, if you can see here my leaves and my flowers I'm just leaving the edges raw you certainly could go through and put a tiny edge around all of this. And as a matter of fact, some of my points of my leaves were starting to come up already. 
so uh, where I saw that happening, I went up a little further just to kind of tack it down good. So I think it turned out pretty good. Here's the other end. I think the leaves turned out really good on this one. So this was a 10 minute table runner pattern that I did at a retreat. Uh, and I was just finishing that up. That's all I had left to do. So thanks for hanging out with me while I did a little thread art on this applique. And I hope you learned something as well. Uh, you can always send me a question through Lessons Learned. Uh, 2021 at gmail.com or leave a comment below and I'll get back with you if you have any questions about this. All right, we'll see you on the next video. Bye!